minute. G'day, I'm Bob from Paradise, and today we're going to talk about um, some medicinal and edible plants. I just picked out three just to give you an idea of the um, the power in in a lot of these um, plants. We're just going to do uh, three today: the uh, Gynura procumbens, also known as sandbun. Um, we're going to do moringa and the uh, rakio onion. So that's just three. There's plenty of them. The uh, a lot, nearly all our medicines, all our Western medicines, come from herbs that have been used for hundreds, probably thousands of years. So um, the um, the um, big companies that um, that produce our medicines, they have to be big to do it. It's a big job. Um, they go on the reputation of these plants and uh, then they start isolating the active ingredients that can cure certain diseases. If you go to your doctor, um, they're not, not going to recommend one of these, they'll probably get excommunicated. If, if um, They wouldn't recommend a herb, they'll recommend a, a medicine that's been made out of the herb. And the reason for that is um, we believe in um, Western um, society in Western medicine that you need to do studies on people um, and um, um, with um, what's what's the word anyway you need you need to do proper scientific studies on on people for a doctor to rec recommend it so um, that's the reason that they don't recommend any um, of the herbs that have often been proven over thousands of years um, and the, the other thing about these herbs, you, a, um, a big company um, can't use a natural, can't put a patent on a natural plant, right? So they're not going to start saying, oh, I use this plant. They've got to get the active ingredient out of it. They can put a patent on that and prove that it works for this um, problem. So, so you cannot put a patent on a natural um, plant. So. So uh, that's why often you don't hear about these plants in the West, but in the East, they're used every day. Um, so the first one we're going to talk about is what we call a diabetes plant, which is Gynura procumbens is its scientific name. Um, we call it the diabetes plant. It's also uh, called Sambung, and it's got a different name for whatever uh, country that you're, that you're in. It's um, also called longevity spinach because it's got so many uh, values that um, it's regarded as a life extender. Um, it's, it's a protect, it'll protect you against um, cancer to some degree, the initial stages of, of cancer. It can... Um, So I'm actually, and I'm quoting this out of scientific studies, right? So this isn't just coming from nowhere. It's a, uh, it'll, it can protect you from certain viruses, which is uh, very interesting in itself. They call it uh, microbial protection. It can be virus, um, fungal diseases, bacterial um, diseases. This plant, Gynura procumbens, can has been shown scientifically to protect you from those sort of those sort of viruses. I don't know about the COVID, but um, that's a good idea to be eating some of it every day. Um, it's probably not going to be recommended because it, um, let's say there's, there's been, if, if you look this plant up, always when you're looking a plant up, look for scientific reviews or science reviews, and then look through the studies that have been done on it. Now, there's so many studies done on this plant trying to find the active ingredients, and they have found the active ingredients, and the, the, and a lot of the studies have been on animals as well. But um, the um, pharmaceutical companies are trying to find the active ingredients they can turn into some sort of a medicine. Okay, so so it'll it'll protect you against um, quite a few things, and same thing uh, goes for the moringa, which uh, the moringa tree. And uh, even and the rakio onion as well. That's why we're 
just going to talk about these things. But when you look these things up, have a look at the scientific reviews. Google with the plant's scientific name and then scientific review and then look at, look at the studies. So with, with this um, plant, um, we recommend that you get about five and with five you can grow an awful lot of them. In the warm weather, in the, in the winter, you can grow them all around Australia, but in the winter they could die off unless you've got it in a protected um, situation. In, in our climate, in the subtropics, it's fine all year round, but it's still here in Nambour, it's not going to grow uh, in the winter. Um, so, but you can get it through the winter and then you can clip it back and away it goes again. So we'll just look over here, Dylan. This is what I re recommend, you put them in a big pot like that and away they go. And you just you can clip, oh, I should have grabbed a um, pair of scissors, did I? Oh yeah, yeah. So, so what I do, so if you've got five, you can put plant five in a pot. Now these, these will grow three or four meters long. They'll go up and then along. So you just, you, but it's no use buying one. If you buy one, and we, we sell these really cheap, five for $39, and it's going to extend your life. If you like your life, well, it's pretty cheap. If you don't like your life, well, don't, don't get it. But if you like your life, you want it extended a bit, get five. Because one, what are you going to do? Eat, eat it, and then it's all gone. So we'll let it grow and then propagate a little bit because they're very easy to propagate. Propagate a few, wait a couple of months. A couple of months, keep propagating. By then, you would have forgotten all about it. So get five to start off with. But what I um, usually do is two things. I'll get about six or eight leaves. Put them, put them one on top of the other. I mean, there's a lot of recipes for these two, but I don't uh, sort of mess around much with that. And put six or eight leaves and just, I won't eat it because I'll be chewing for five minutes or, one, or two minutes anyway. Easy to eat. It's got no, hardly any flavor to me. It's a bit like eating lettuce, but, and you just, eat it like that or you can what I recommend you've got so much leaf um, at this time of year and you'll have none, none in the winter because you, it stops um, growing is to dry it in a uh, you know one of those little dryers that you buy or out in the Sun or in a, even in a microwave you can dry it and then turn it into a powder and one teaspoon of the powder equals four leaves and you can eat it right through the winter I should also say this um, plant, why it's good for um, hypertension, is that it's a, a vasodilator that increases the size of the blood vessels. So it's good for hypertension. Also, if you've heard of a thing called ED, it's very good for that because it increases the um, size of the um, blood vessels, increases blood flow. Um, have a chew. Um, for diabetes, it's it's a blood balancer. So a blood glucose balancer. So it'll balance your uh, blood glucose. Anyway, I'm not an expert in these things. I'm just telling you a little bit of what, of what I know, which isn't a lot. But you can study these things by uh, doing just what I said and uh, googling it and. Uh, drawing it and and the, as I said these things um, in in um, Eastern and Chinese medicine have been used for a long long time so I'll just have to put that down um, as I said it grows easy from a cutting too so now we'll go down we'll go down to where we have uh, the Moringa and the Rakyo and we'll just talk a little bit more so if you go forward Dylan and I'll come down with you So we're walking past some Dolly chandeliers. Really good Christmas presents. A bit, probably a bit late for Christmas. But I love these. This is it's a Medanilla Dolly, uh, Dolly Cafilla. Have a look at those. Have a look at the flowers. Well, you can't see any flowers now. Have a look at the Dolly. We just call them Dollies. Anyway, we'll just go down through here slowly. A lot of plants in here. Um, Going to our outside area, we have a lot of plants outside as well. we'll come, just go around that way, and I'll come up around here.
By the way, we're going to announce the winner of our competition um, at the end of this talk as well. Now, this here is the Rakyo onion. Great culinary plant, found, used in uh, Japan, Asia. It's called Rakyo in um, Japan. It's got other names in um, China and other parts of Asia. It's an onion, you can use it as an onion, it's a mild onion. In the bottom of there, each one of these little stems has an onion on it. So these are great cul culinary plants, they've got a little onion on the bottom. They multiply like mad, so once you get this going, it'll multiply and you can have a, a nice area for it where you can harvest these little onions. And you can, you actually eat the stems as well. And uh, it's got a great, a lot of medicinal values as well. Um, I'm not going to go into them all, but if you want to look it up, um, I'm just saying this is a great plant and a great little ornamental plant as well. You wouldn't believe that these, they send up flower spikes about this high and uh, it's got these beautiful um, uh, flowers. So it's good for that. Now if you look in the bottom, let's pull this one out here. You can see these are just bulbs are just developing in here. So each one of those stems has a little bulb which are just developing now. So they'll get a bit bigger than that. And, uh, as I said, and so you just replant, replant one, eat the rest, and away they go. They're quick and very popular. So that's the um, Rakyo, I believe it's called Jia Tu in China. I just looked it up, Jia Tu. But I've probably got the pronunciation wrong. Um, and it's also uh, anti-cancer, diabetic, antimicrobial, these things that are antimicrobial, I think they're becoming important these days. You know, as I said, anti-virus. I'm not saying it's um, necessarily good against COVID, but um, why wouldn't it be? Maybe it is, maybe it's not. Um, so it doesn't do any harm to have it. Now this, this plant here is the Moringa. Yep. Very quick growing and will grow to about five or six uh, meters. You can cut it back every year and it'll develop a thicker and thicker trunk. You can just keep cutting it, eating it. So just, I'll have to just read off some of the values um, where do I put some of the, the nutrient values of this plant and it has a lot of um, medicinal values as well especially for autoimmune and cancer again diet, it's good for diabetes and um, blood pressure, but other other things. These are really powerful antioxidants, and but they've they've got um, nutrients inside them that actually fight these um, different diseases. So anyway, so this came out of our catalogue. Moringa. It's called its botanical name is Moringa oleifera, right? And it has more than seven times the vitamin C of oranges. It has ten times the vitamin A of carrots. 17 times the calcium of, of milk, nine times the protein of yogurt, and three times the potassium of bananas, and 20 times, five times the iron of spinach. So it's pretty powerful stuff, you know, to stick in your bre uh, <coughs> breakfast cereal, just like the, as I said, to dry the um, diabetes plant. You can um, just harvest this as the plant gets bigger. You just keep cutting it, it'll split, and cut it again, it'll and cut it, just keep cutting, cutting, harvesting. So you have just plant a lot of them and it's a fantastic uh, plant for nutrients but it's also got medicinal values. Again, look it up, look up the science of it, don't just um, take my word for it and um, a good useful plant to have. And uh, so that's the Moringa. Um, so as I said, we're only talking about those three today. There's lots of other um, plants that you can study. We do new plants every three weeks um, and so there's a vast array of plants this is possibly three of the best but there are there are others as well um, I think we're going to draw the um, winner of our competition um, Dylan if you can just tell us we've done we've drawn it how did we how did we do that uh, we do it for like a um, generator through a, a generator on the yeah. Let's put these back here. So, and the winner is Nina Woodcock from Bonnet Bay, New South Wales.
Hope you're watching Nina. Congratulations. Nina Woodcock, Bonnet Bay, New South Wales. Right. Now, the other thing, um, just in concluding, I think I've covered most of what we needed to say just to get you interested in these medicinal edible herbs. Um, the last date that we're sending plants out is uh, the 13th, which is next Monday and Tuesday. We'll be sending plants out. Anything that comes after next um, Friday, we'll wait till the 3rd of January. Doesn't mean you can't send it, just got to wait a couple of weeks and we'll be sending again on the 4th of January. So, Western Australia and Northern Territory will go on the um, 16th by toll, overnight air, and um, Tasmania will go on the 17th. So, um, that's what we're doing there. So, um, is there anything else we had to I think we've covered everything? Um, have a look at our website there's a catalogue new catalogue coming out either tonight or tomorrow about midday and uh, have a look at that have some fun over Christmas and have a happy new year and uh, I'll sign off for now thank you